So I want to go back to this problem and show you a different way. Um, I don't care how you, no, actually I do care how you do it, but depending on how the multiple choice presents itself um, will depend on what I want. If it's a multiple choice, maybe one of them is multiple choice and one of them's not. Um, okay, so you would add one like we said before. And you would still divide by negative two. But what I didn't think about is the ability to present things in vertex form. And so if I was to present this in vertex form, when I square it, I'm left with x plus 1 squared over 4, which is the same thing as 1 fourth x plus 1 squared equals y plus 9. And then I would subtract 9, and I'd be left with f inverse of x equals 1 fourth x plus 1 squared um, minus 9, where the vertex is negative 1, negative 9, and it's a vertical compression by a factor of 1 fourth. So I just want you to see a separate way to do it, which is a million times easier than having to box this out and then distributing by 1 fourth. And I want to say that I would like you to do the same thing potentially with this problem. Or when I had the original inverse, I'll do it in orange. Um, it was 3 and then the cube root of x minus 1 plus 6. I switch the x and the y. Subtract 6 like I did before. Divide by 3. So I'm left with x minus 6 over 3 equals the cube root of y minus 1. And then I would um, take it to the third power, like I did before. But if I want to leave it in vertex form, instead of boxing out the x minus 6, like I did three times here, and getting this crazy thing, I can just leave it like that, and then 3 cubed is 27. Hence, 1 27th x minus 6 cubed. And then I'm left with that cancels, y minus 1, add 1 to both sides, and I get f inverse of x equals 1 27th x minus 6 cubed plus 1, where this is a cubic function, um, and you can see that it's a vertical uh, compression by a factor of 1 27th, 6 the vertex is 6 right, so if I was to graph it, 6, 1, okay, and you can kind of see that it's a cubic function. Boom, there's the vertex, just for your side knowledge. Okay, so either way, whether you give me this answer or this answer is good to go. And what I might do, which kind of sounds fun, is if it's multiple choice and I give you this, I'll give you bonus if you can give me this. Okay, so that sounds like a good plan. Um, also, when I started doing this one, I got cut off, so I'm going to just restart it. If you got it, then you'll just fast forward. All right, finding the inverse, switching the x and the y, subtract 10, multiply both sides by 3, divide by negative 5, and I get f inverse of x equals negative 3 fifths x plus 6. So I have the original and I have the inverse, okay? I'll deal with graphing it in a second. I think I'm gonna deal with the table first. So I'm gonna go x, f of x, x, f inverse of x. And they said I need at least three points, so let's do three points. I'm gonna apply the same type of logic to both of them. As Since I have a fraction, the easiest value to pick is zero. If I pick zero here, that's gone, and 10 minus zero, is 10. Let me do it over here. If I plug in 0 here times this, it's gone, plus 6 is 6. Now the harder part to me is maybe figuring out what additional points you need to pick. I look at the fraction and that's what makes it difficult. So as long as that number matches, 3 over 3 is gone, and 10 minus 5 is 5. So I'm going to do a multiple of 3, so I do 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2, times 5 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So that works.
But this time, my denominator is 5, so I'm going to pick 5 as one of the points. That's gone. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. A multiple of 5 is 10. 5 times goes into 10 2 times. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 6 is 0. Okay. The last thing that was needed for it was to graph them both. I'm going to fake it. I don't know if on your test you have fake or not, but just make it look reasonably good. Up 10, down halfway, right 3, f of x. Up 6, which is a little bit higher there, and then down 3, right 5. And that's f inverse, and then the reflection line is y equals x. So that kind of reviewed this problem, this problem, and this problem. Now let's get to the bonus. I guess there's going to be a little bit too much bonus on this test, but whatever. It's the way life goes. Good for you. So um, I see a lot going on here. On the top, there's fractions on the top, fractions on the bottom, whole numbers. Okay, I'm going to take care of it one at a time. So for me, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. I'll keep the 7 tenths on the bottom. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add 1 half plus 1 fifth. Remember the trick. Multiply. 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 So it's 7 tenths. And so then that means when I add these two, I'm getting x to the 7 tenths. Oh, well that worked out. 7 tenths on top, 7 tenths on bottom. Bye bye. That means I'm left with x to the negative 1. But you know you can't have a negative exponent, so you bring it to the bottom, which is 1 over x, and then x cannot equal 0. Restrictions. Okay? I think this last problem I'll do on scratch paper. So let's bring this down. This will also be a crazy bonus. I think you can agree with it being the seventh root. So when I see 512, I'm thinking 2. See, 2, 5, 6. It just seems really big for me, so I'm just going to 1, 2, 8, 2, 64. Now remember, I have to have piles of 7. So this is kind of a pain, but honestly, in the calculator, it's too hard for me to figure out what numbers. As soon as I see it's even, I'm feeling a, um, twos. All right, so I need to get a pile of 7. One, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's one pile. So there, I'll just kind of, I know I can't really circle it. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Boom, bring out a 2. And then if you look, I'm left with 2 of them. So 2 times 2 is 4. 7 through. And then for the bottom, that's a little bit easier. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have one pile, and then I'm left with four of them, seven through. Okay. Um, so now what I need to do is figure out, if I need to get piles of seven, but I only have a pile of four, I actually need to give three more of them. And once I give three more, there four plus three gives me seven. Boom, that gives me an x. But I have another x here, hence x squared in the denominator. Now, if I give this on the bottom, I've got to give it on the top. And since it's the same root, 2, 4x cubed, 7th root, it's not plus or minus, and I'm good to go. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, please study.